Welcome to our fourth Lent service. The service today will be entitled, First, Put On Your Oxygen Mask. And we will begin singing our theme song for Your Kingdom Come, which is the title of this series, which is Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain, hymn 435, 435. comes to you, righteous and having salvation, speaking peace to the nations and ruling from sea to sea, to the ends of the earth. God comes to us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Come to Calvary's holy mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Here, a pure and healing fountain flows for you, for me, for all, in a full perpetual tide, opened when our Savior died. Coming to Calvary's holy mountain, we confess our sins. Merciful Father, I am wrapped up in myself. I cling to comfort and choose the easy way. I want tweaking, not transformation. Greed, envy, intolerance, and jealousy mark my life. I fail to learn, and what I have learned, I fail to practice. I judge others with a standard I never use for myself. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. 
Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1 states, On that day, there will be a fountain open to cleanse from sin and uncleanness. Because of Christ's cross and crucifixion, Zechariah's day is today. Here, a pure and healing fountain flows for you, for me, for all, in a full perpetual time opened when our Savior died. In Jesus' name, you are absolved, forgiven, and loved. God's kingdom comes to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your crucified, risen, ascended Son has sent us into the world to share the good news of your kingdom. Inspire us with your Holy Spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear the gospel may be drawn to saving faith through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Old Testament reading is written in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 8, verses 20 through 23. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Peoples shall come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of the Jew, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is written in Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 4, verses 2 through 6. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it, with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Conduct yourselves wisely toward others, making the best use of the time let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer every person. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel is written in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country? and go after the one that is lost until he finds it. And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having 10 silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and see diligently until she finds it? 
And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us sing our sermon hymn, hymn 826, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying.
There we are. With the message for today, which is based on the text from Zechariah chapter 8, verses 20 through 23. I'll read the text again. Thus says the Lord of hosts, peoples shall yet come, even the inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go at once to entreat the favor of the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I myself am going. Many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to entreat the favor of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Here ends our text. Dear friends in Christ, our title is a familiar announcement for those who travel by plane. And once again, we hear the announcement First, secure your own oxygen mask. And this announcement is, first of all, a reminder that in case of emergency, in other words, if the pressure in the cabin falls, uh, then oxygen masks will fall out of the, ceil the plane ceiling in front of the passengers. So it's a reminder of what's going to happen, but also a warning to the people to not instinctively do what they would do otherwise, which is first, for example, put the mask on their child or, or put the mask on their, their elderly parent. No. First, put your own oxygen mask on, then you can help others because if you don't have your own oxygen mask on, you will uh, not be able to help others. And we are in a similar emergency situation. We look around us and there are people on all sides who are gasping for spiritual breath for that, that gospel which gives life. And they are dying without the peace of God in their hearts without the hope of eternal life, without their Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, what do we do in such a situation? Well, this is why we have our text for today. It's Zechariah to the rescue, to remind us in this type of Old Testament Great Commission, that God desires all people to be saved and that he wants you and me to be a part of reaching out and telling others the good news about Jesus Christ. But before we do this, first, we need to get a large amount of spiritual oxygen in our lungs. And so that's what we're going to do today. And the first thing that God wants to remind us in our text is that God comes to, his, to dwell with his people. In verse 3 of our text, he says, Thus says the Lord, I have returned to Zion and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. And Jerusalem shall be called the faithful city 
and the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. After their 70 years of captivity in Babylon, the Judeans, the Jews, returned to their homeland. And through the prophet Zechariah, they are reminded that God comes to dwell with them. And this is good news because where God dwells, he brings his blessing, that of harmony and happiness, of sharing and shalom, as we read about in verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again sit in the streets of Jerusalem, each with staff in hand because of great age. And the streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. See, where God comes and dwells with his people, there is harmony among the, the, his people, among the ages and happiness as they live in that, in that wonderful presence of the Lord. And they share with one another and experience shalom, that wonderful Hebrew word, which means peace and health and wholeness. Secondly, God not only brings peace to his people, but he also draws his people to himself. He, he brings them home. As we read in verses 7 and 8, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them to dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in faithfulness and in righteousness. See, God was going to gather all his people together and draw them together to live in his holy city, Jerusalem. He would save them from their enemies and make them his own through faithfulness and righteousness. And finally, he would restore all creation as we read in verse 12. For there shall be a sowing of peace. The vine shall give its fruit and the ground shall give its produce and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. You see, God, when he comes, he restores his rightful order so that it bears fruit. And rather than there be curses of thorn and thistle, there will be a blessing and fruitfulness of the earth with do instead of uh, lack of water and fruit bearing to provide wine for joy in the heart and food for filling the stomach. So when God comes and dwells with his people, there are blessings of peace and fellowship and renewal. This has its effect among God's people so that the fasts, which they experienced earlier, give way to feasts, as we read in verse 19. And the word of the Lord of hosts came to me saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, 
the fast of the fourth month and the fast of the fifth and the fast of the seventh and the fast of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah seasons of joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love truth and peace. See, during their years of captivity in Babylon, the Jews were unable to keep the fast as they had when they lived in Jerusalem and in Judea. They were unable to keep the fast and they longed to return to the land of Judea as the the psalmist write, by the waters of Babylon, we lay down and wept, thinking of you, O Jerusalem. But now, having returned to their land, now it was time to celebrate festivals. And we ourselves are experiencing a type of captivity, not being able to come together and worship as a congregation. And you probably can relate to the feeling, even though it's a relatively short time compared to what the Jews had to experience. But during this time, we need to remember to put our own oxygen mask on. In other words, to be, to be filled with God's word in our homes, with our families. See, when we stay away from God's word, whether not coming to church or not being in the word with our families, we forget some of the amazing gospel details. Like an innocent man was condemned to death and a murdered, a murderer, I mean a murdered man came back to life. These are amazing details. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who was without sin, was condemned to death. Not because he had done anything wrong, but because the, his enemies wanted to get rid of him. And he was crucified on the cross and, and died for the forgiveness of of the sins of the whole world for you and for me. But he was raised again on the third day, raised to life. And now having ascended into heaven, he lives and reigns for us all. And when we are reminded of these, these wonderful facts of the gospel, we are revived, we have new life and restored again in order to live as his people and celebrate the feast. And so our desire is, is not to celebrate this feast alone, but rather to gather with our, our fellow believers like Andrew, who having spoken with Jesus, the first thing he did was go and find his brother, Peter, and to tell him, we have found the Messiah. Or the Samaritan woman, once Jesus spoke to her at the, at the well and, and revealed himself as the Messiah, she went back to her village and she says, Come and see this man who has told me everything I have ever done. <laughs> we want other, we want to share this good news with others. We want to celebrate the feast with others. 
or Paul, who once he was converted from being a persecutor of the church to being a believer, the first thing he did was go to the synagogue and prove from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ. Or Peter and John, who were sharing the good news about Jesus in the temple, and they came and arrested them and threw them in prison. And they came, they were released finally, and they said, we cannot but speak of the things we have seen and heard. They bore witness in front of their enemies. Well, this is what God is calling us to do. To assist other people with the gospel. To let them know the life that they that, that is made available to them through faith in Jesus Christ. That's what our, our text was all about. It reminds us that, that God wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth, the truth that God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to suffer and die on the cross as the penalty for our sins, taking that penalty upon himself and paying the, the ransom price so that we might be God's own children, his own people again, Jews and Gentiles, people living in cities, the urban, and also those living on the land of the nations, the rural. God wants people from every tribe, people, nation, and language to come and believe in his son, Jesus Christ, for their salvation. It is a picture that we see in the book of Revelation. God doesn't want just all people to be saved. He wants every person to be saved. Every unbeliever to hear the good news about their Savior, Jesus, and hearing what the believer has. They wanted to. This is the picture that we, we see in verse 23 when it says that 10 men from the nations of every tongue shall take hold of the robe of a Jew. See, because, because as Jesus told the Samaritan woman, salvation comes from the Jews. This is God's plan to bring the good news of salvation to all people through his chosen people, the people of Israel, the Jews. And so, when they hear the gifts which God offers, of forgiveness of sins, of peace in their hearts, of life, abundant life here on earth and eternal life in heaven, of deliverance from this world, this veil of tears to a glorious eternity in heaven. This is why they take hold, they seize hold of the Jew. And then they will join together, confessing as one that God is with us. As it says, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is the prophecy of Isaiah that Emmanuel will come. That is God with us, fulfilled in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
and believing, they will also experience the power of the gospel that transforms lives so that the love of God is expressed in our dealings with our children. I know this is a difficult time with lots of kids out of school and, and how, do we, how are we going to treat, treat them? And, and, and we, are, we show them love and kindness and help them. Or the teenager who misses their, their peer group, their, their buddies, and they can experience again that, that group in their families as they come to, come to uh, once again appreciate the, the blessing of family. Or we can, our, our, relation, our, our, our life is transformed in the office so that we uh, no longer uh, participate, perhaps, in, in the gossip, what's going on in the office. That's no longer a part of our lives. See, all this takes place through the power of the gospel. As Paul writes in Romans 1.16, the gospel is the power of God for the salvation of all who believe, first the Jew and then the Gentile. See, the gospel isn't just letters on a page. It is God's living, active word which gives life, forgiveness of sins, and salvation to all who believe. So look around, and what do you see? You see the need around you. You hear the cries of people who are lacking something. You feel the pain of those who are suffering so without the Lord Jesus. This is the reason why, first, secure your own oxygen mask. Breathe in deeply that spiritual breath, that gospel-infused oxygen, which gives you life and strength and power. And then what? Well, <laughs> look out, world. Here we come. Amen. Let us continue now with the prayer of the church. Our King comes to us, righteous and having salvation. May God hear our prayers because of our crucified and risen King, Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our lives. We make ourselves available to your holy will. Help us become living examples of your love in the world. Open our hearts to the areas of our lives that need to change so that we carry out the mission of your church, connecting people to Jesus. Inspire us to live the Christian life in ways that are dynamic and engaging, bringing renewal to our church, and make us hunger and thirst for more of Jesus. Give us courage when we are afraid, hope when we are discouraged, and clarity in times of decision. Defend us, O Lord, by your grace, to provide us with good and faithful leaders who will preserve the precious gift of liberty and protect the lives of our citizens. Give them special wisdom and help them to work in harmony in the midst of this pandemic. 
Bless the members of our armed forces and protect them as they defend us. Grant your blessing to all emergency and medical workers also who continue to come to our aid in times of great need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enjoying the riches of your grace, we ask you, O Lord, to give us generous hearts that we may share what you have provided with those in need and work for the common good of all. Give us patience in our seclusion and comfort the lonely. Grant relief to the unemployed, the underemployed, the homeless, and all their families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Knowing your healing will and gifts, we pray, O Lord, to spare us from all calamity by pestilence, scarcity, and fear. Remember the sick in their afflictions. Calm those troubled in mind and keep steadfast the dying. Hear us especially for those whom we now name in our hearts. Show us your gracious will, O Lord, and sustain those who are afflicted in body or mind until that day when you will bestow upon us new bodies fit for the eternal life you have prepared for us in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Mindful of your promise, we ask you, O Lord, to comfort those who grieve and to build up those who mourn with hope for the resurrection. Remembering the faithful who have died in Christ, we pray you to bring us at last to be with them in your nearer presence, looking forward to that day when we shall join in the marriage supper of the Lamb and his kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. They that drink shall live forever. Tis a soul-renewing flood. God is faithful. God will never break his covenant of blood. Signed when our Redeemer died. Sealed when he was glorified. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promise, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>